Okay, so I finally have this game at a point where I can share a version of it amongst the game dev forums that I participate in. Um, so I'll be putting up a demo in the near future. Before I get into the most recent changes, a uh, quick heads up, one of the attacks that I'm going to be showing off today, it's a lightning attack that does a screen flash. As far as I understand, it's not a seizure risk at all. Um, it's not a strobe effect, it's not red and blue or anything like that, but it does flash white for a fraction of a second, just once. Um, so I just wanted to give a heads up before I surprise anybody with that, in case it matters. But I've seen that kind of effect in tons of games before, and I don't think it's a problem. But anyways, let me know if I'm wrong. Anyway, so the big thing that I've really needed to get in here before I could put the game out into the world is this. Now, uh, here's what we got. It's obviously not pretty, it's not final, but it does tell you how to play, it gives you the controls, tells you what everything does and how it all works. And I think that that's what's important here, right? Um, this, actually, is a new gameplay mechanic that I've just worked in. It's an idea that I had, I don't know, about a week ago. And it really didn't take very long to get it working on the game, fortunately. I was worried that my um, my code that controls uh, shooting would not be built for it, but uh, it wasn't too bad. So I will get into that in a moment here. Uh, first, let's build our fleet. So every ship has a different supernova attack. Um, those attacks are not described here yet. I'll have to reconfigure this whole thing to make it fit, unfortunately. Um, not exactly sure how I'm going to do that, but anyways. Um, so I'm not going to show every single one of them, but I will show the one I said I would with the lightning. That one's pretty cool. Uh, I had to adjust the scorpion. So the scorpion's base attack, the shotgun, I was having a really hard time with uh, figuring out how to make a super version of it that wasn't just ridiculously overpowered because the whole thing with the shotgun is it's just lots of bullets basically, right? And so generally with the shotgun, you're at a bit of a distance away, but if you want to maximize the damage, you just get point blank. It says right here, it's not a cheat. Um, and if you do that against a ship that has a weakness to ballistics, it's double that amount of damage. So, yeah, um, what I ended up doing was like dramatically nerfing the base attack, which is okay because it was already like quite a bit stronger than most other base attacks. In fact, I think it was the strongest base attack before by quite a lot. Um, so that's a little different now. Um, did I add them already? No. So yeah, I'll just show those ones, and then on the blue team, it doesn't matter what I put in there, because we're not going to look at them anyways. So, I don't have a loading screen, it just looks like it's frozen, but it's not, I promise. Um, so here we are, we've got these nav buttons that I added in the last update, so you can click to get to the ship you want. There's a bit of an issue where if they overlap, um, you don't necessarily get the ship you're expecting. I'm working on that, but anyways, let's start with let's start with the mothership. So I'm gonna give I'm using the debug to refill my uh, AP. I'm gonna give the cuttlefish over there a restock shot, which will charge its uh, primary attack to the overloaded um, like top tier. And here's that lightning effect, which I think looks pretty awesome. Um, the lightning, yeah, I, I had to draw the lightning myself, it's possibly placeholder, but, um, just the whole sequence of the thing appears, and then it's a flash, and then it fades away, it all worked out basically as I had envisioned in my mind, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, and then we have our scorpion over here with the weaker shotgun attack. You can see it's a much more narrow spray with fewer bullets, but... Uh, more effective at a distance than it used to be, um, but not ridiculously effective either. Um, 
we fill my AP bar again. So these um, little things that are shining over here, that is stardust. If you get close to it, it'll get sucked towards your ship, and this bar here will start to fill up. Uh, if you take any damage, you will lose some of it. I think you lose uh, five stardust for every damage, or maybe it's just two. I forget what I had it set to, but um, you do lose some of it. But when it fills up all the way, and I'm going to cheat and press a button to give myself a full bar, you get your supernova attack. So the Scorpions is the Quake Shotgun, which is pretty similar to its base shotgun. That might not have looked too impressive, but each of those bullets is a bigger version of the shot. Um, and I think they do three damage each, so it's quite a lot more um, deadly. And then, uh, let's see, let's show the Cuttlefishes, um, which looks an awful lot like the Lightning one. Oh, out of time. That's okay, let's just go back. Uh, here's that flash again. So the difference that time is that it was a red lightning thing, um, lightning bolt. And uh, it doesn't do the shutdown EMP effect, but it does do burn damage. So it's, uh, and it does more damage overall actually. So it's it's a better version, it just doesn't do the, the EMP shutdown. Um, and then the Orb Weavers is also pretty cool, and possibly overpowered, I'm not really sure yet, but anyways, it looks just like, oh hold on a second, and <laughs> that's the regular one where it shoots the little mines, um, Supernova version looks similar, but when the mines deploy, they have these little rings around them, um, that's not a detection range, but they do sort of make them distinct from the regular um, mines. And if you get close to these ones, they behave like the stardust and get sucked towards you. So that makes them significantly more dangerous, especially if you have someone trapped in a gravity well. Because usually, um, you know, there's, there's like 50 mines, I think, that get spit out, but usually most of them don't actually end up hitting anybody, um, unless you're like, you know, expending AP to hit them with something else to knock them into those mines. These ones, there's a good chance you're going to get beat up by a lot of them. Uh, especially if you're trapped in the gravity well, as I said. Um, yeah, so, like I said, every ship has a different uh, supernova attack. I'm not going to get into all of them right now, but that's a few of them. Um, so one of the cool things with the stardust in the environment is that it actually makes the um, the mini mines, which I have renamed Stardust Mines, uh, much more useful. Because it used to be that, well, let's just switch to this guy for a sec. Uh, okay, so we're just going that way. So before I had the Stardust, you would see you would see something like that, and you would know, ah, those are mines. Those are someone else's mines because that's what they do when it's not your turn the mines transform into that kind of sparkling star thing. And you would just go around, you would avoid that area. But now, now that there's something in the map that looks like those mines but isn't, um, they can potentially be hidden more. But you can see there's a big cluster of them here, so that's obviously not a, uh, a natural occurrence. Um, although this orb weaver here could spread them out more and make it less obvious so that someone might actually bump into them completely unwittingly. Just wait a second for those to open up. See, they'll change into their stardust form when it's not your turn. And you got through there. Oh, almost unscathed. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it. It doesn't feel like much now that I've, you know, spent less than 10 minutes explaining it all, but um, yeah, I've been pretty busy with this stuff. Oh yeah, one other little thing is um, when you press the I key, it used to first make the HP um, display disappear, and then the icon, like it had different levels of hiding the mini HUD. Uh, that would always get on my nerves. I only kind of did that because I thought you might want to like peek at what's behind here. Like, I don't know, I just... It seemed like it made sense at the time, but um, 
if you're ever in a situation where you want the mini head out of the way, it's nice when you can just do it in a single button press, which is super obvious, but it just took me a while to get around to fixing that. Anyways, that's all I've got for now. Um, yeah, look for a, a demo on the Unity forums and possibly on r slash playmygame in the near future. Okay, see ya.